Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. My co-host, Mr. Brody, is here. I'm ready to do another uh, video from the 1978 Red Sox season. Uh, for a game from June 24th of 1978. But before we do that, um, we just wanted to give a condolences to um, the family of Daniel Flores, which was a Red Sox prospect. He was only 17. And uh, he passed away, I think it was yesterday, I want to see. It says November 8th is the article. Um, but passed away um, from complications from cancer treatment, I guess, or somewhere in Mass, uh, UMass. Uh, I think it was UMass. Um, but he was being treated for cancer. I'm not sure exactly what type of cancer as they kept it private. But unfortunately, he was a switch hitting catcher who was supposed to be really, really good. He was the uh, number five. In the, in the Red Sox system, but he was also, I think, their number one international um, prospect from this past July. So condolences to his family for that. Um, came right off the uh, few days after, or day after, um, Roy Holiday um, passed away in a plane crash too. So a sad week for baseball fans and for, uh, for sports fans in general. So condolences to their families and everything. So, all right, so let's get this game underway. We'll play in honor of them. Uh, it's going to be, and Miss Mags is here on my lap. We need to get Miss Mags a chair. As Mr. Brody said that uh, he'd like to see us get Miss Mags a co-host seat too, right next to him. Um, but anyway, uh, a game from June 24th of, there she is, of 1978. Uh, Saturday, I believe it was. Second game of a three-game series with the, I think it's a three-game series with the uh, Baltimore Orioles. Aw, he's going to get up for it. Look at that. What a good guy he is. Good guy, Mr. Brody. You being a good guy for your for your sister there? What a good guy. Yeah, we'll get we'll get you a, get another another bed there, huh? So you guys can both watch it together. Yeah, we got to do that. Anyway, Mr. Brody's quite happy. He's gotten his treats. He went for his walk. And you get a uh, gentleman gave him two, two pieces of ham today instead of the normal one piece. So he's quite happy with that. Um, oh. <laughs> so, all right. So, without further ado, let's get this game underway. Scott McGregor goes for the Baltimore Orioles against Louis Tiant for the Boston Red Sox. So, let's get the game underway. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. <laughs> play ball as Mr. Brody stands up for the National Anthem. Everybody should stand up for the National Anthem, right Mr. Brody? Yeah, that's what you were doing. You were standing up for the nas National Anthem and being a gentleman at the same time. Good boy. So, alright. So, you want to do the lineups, Mr. Brody, for the uh, for the Baltimore Orioles against Louis Tiant? Who's going to win today? The Red Sox? Yeah, the Red Sox are going to win today. Yeah. Alright. So, Louis Tion comes goes to the hill. Uh, I believe he had a kind of a poor outing last time, so hopefully he'll have a better outing this time. He was four and three with a 5.60 ERA, 64 innings pitched, 69 hits allowed, 30 walks, which is very high, uh, and 39 strikeouts, and has surrendered eight home runs. So let's check out his card there. I think he had a rough outing his last time. So let's let's check out his outing of last time from the 19th yeah he had pitched five innings four only allowed four hits but gave up five runs for them earned nine walks that's right that was the one he walked a ton 
So he won nine walks and only four strikeouts. And he got the loss on that one. So hopefully he'll have a better outing than the outing before. He let up six runs, but Red Sox managed to win that one. Uh, he got the win for that one. So hopefully uh, he'll have a better outing this time. He's had some pretty rough outings here, uh, as you can see. He only really had one, two. He did pitch a complete game on the ninth, though. So he had like three or four, four good outings and one, two, three, five bad outings. So hopefully he'll try to even that up a little bit by having a good outing today. So for your visiting Baltimore Orioles, it's going to be Larry Harlow, the center fielder, bats first. Billy Smith is your second baseman, batting second. The switch hitting Eddie Murray bats third in his second year, his sophomore year. Batting cleanup is Ken Singleton, the right fielder. The left fielder, Pat Kelly, bats fifth. Batting sixth will be Terry Crowley, the DH. Batting seventh, Doug Desense is the third baseman. Behind the plate, Rick Dempsey batting eighth, and the shortstop, Mark Belanger, will bat ninth. So it's a good day today for baseball, as you can see by the weather. So, all right. So Harlow comes in with a 256 average with four homers and 28 runs batted in. Keon looks in for the sign from Fisk. Here's the windup and the pitch. It's going to be up the three column of Harlow. And it's going to be a deep fly ball, but it looks like it's hooking, hooking, and it's foul. Just to the right of the pesky pole. Here comes the next pitch. And he swings and a miss for strike three. So Tion strikes out Harlow for the first out of the game. And Larry Barnett is the third base umpire. Great. Alrighty, and batting second will be Billy Smith here. He's hitting off to a good start. That's a great start, actually, hitting 325, 60 points above his average, 65 to be exact, with eight homers and 26 runs batted in. Here's the windup in the pitch by Kiaren. That'll be a ground ball to first. Waves off Kiaren and runs to the bag for out number two. That'll bring up Eddie Murray, hitting 284 with nine homers and 31 runs batted in. Just about right where he should be at this time of the season based upon his stats. There is the lineup and the pitch is going to be off the Teon's card, the sixth call. And that will be a ground ball to Burleson at short. He gets in front of it. And he will make the play for out number three. So after one half inning, it's the Baltimore nothing and the Red Sox coming to bat. So Scott McGregor comes into the game. He's hit it. He's off to a great start. Eight, eight and three record with a 2.22 ERA. 89 innings pitched, 79 hits allowed, 26 walks and 47 strikeouts, and has surrendered nine home runs. So the lineup for the Red Sox is pretty standard. Uh, Rick Burleson, the shortstop, bats first. Jerry Remy, your second baseman, bats second. The DH today is Jim Rice batting third, batting cleanup the left fielder Kyle Yastrzemski. Behind the plate, Carlton Fisk batting fifth. Batting sixth will be the center fielder Fred Lynn. First baseman George Scott bats seventh. Dwight Evans, the right fielder, bats eighth. And the third baseman, Butch Hobson, will bat ninth. The Burleson comes into the game hitting 280 with a homer and 27 runs batted in. McGregor looks in for the sign from Dempsey. Nods his head. Here's the windup and the pitch. Burleson's going to get a good one to hit here. This one's going to go deep, high off the wall. Almost get out of here. And do we, we're going to hold the double here. So Burleson will end up at second with a long double. Thought about taking three, but decided better. Alright, sided against it. Jerry Remy up now. Comes into the game hitting 288 with a homer and 21 runs batted in. He's going to be off of his two column. And that's going to be a ground ball to Murray at first. He raced Remy to the bag and it's going to be close. And looks like he's going to beat Remy to the bag. Russell moves over to third. So one out and a run on third for Jim Rice. RBI opportunity here. 
Price comes in hitting 344 with 25 homers and 66 runs batted in, leading the Red Sox in all three categories. Here's Lawanya Ben the pitch, and it's going to be off the four column. So this will be a ground ball to Desensei is at third. He's at two range. And he'll get in front of it. And look to run it back. And oh, actually, Burleson did come home on the. He must have been coming home on contact. So Rice will get an RBI ground out there. Adding to his team leading total. And we have nobody in the co-host seat. Mr. Brody, you can come back to your co-host seat. Miss Mags has left. <laughs> so, Alright, so that'll be Kai Stremski next. He comes up to that with two outs and nobody on. Hitting 290 with seven homers and 33 runs batted in. And we have the sixth column of McGregor. And that will be a ground out to Murray. He grabs it and races Yastrzemski to the bag. And he beats him for out number three. So the Red Sox get on the board. It's one nothing after one. It'll be Singleton, Kelly, and Crowley up for the O's. Singleton's hitting 225 with eight homers and 24 runs got it in. Here's the pitch by Tion. He's gonna get a good one to hit here. And this one is almost the same spot that Burleson hit it, high up off the wall. Lynn throws it back in. Singleton will have himself a leadoff double. So that'll bring up Pat Kelly, hitting 256 with three homers and 11 runs batted in. He's going to be off of his two column, which will be a ground ball to Remy. Decide to at least get the runner over. Throws over to Scott. So runner in third with one down. For the DH, Terry Crowley. Crowley comes in hitting 313 and 16 at bats. RBI opportunity, chance to get his first RBI this season here. It's going to be off the sixth column. He aren't. And that will be a ground ball to Remy, which looks like that will get the run home. So Crowley gets his first RBI on the ground out to Remy. And that'll tie up the game at one. So the sensei is up now. Hitting 288 with nine homers and 34 runs got in. Like Murray, he's about a, where he should be on the season, based upon his stats. And he strikes out swing for out number three, but the Orioles tie it up. And after one and a half, it's one one. And it'll bring up Fisk. Fisk is hitting 328. Nine homers and 40 runs batted in. And that'll be off the four column of McGregor. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Kelly's under it, sprints over, and makes the catch. So one out and nobody on for Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn comes into the game hitting exactly what he hit for the season, 298 with 15 homers and 50 runs batted in. So his power numbers are well above where he, where he should be at this time. So he could have a monster season based upon that, but I'm sure it'll probably level out. So it's gonna be off McGregor's four column. And that will be a strike out looking. So two up and two down for the Red Sox here in the second. Brings up George the Boomer Scott. Boomer's hitting 240 with four homers and 17 runs batted in. And he's going to get a good pitch to hit here. And he's going to hit this one at Country Mile as it goes over the green monster into the netting for out number, I mean for a solo home run. So the Red Sox reclaim the lead on the solo home run by Scott. Bring up the number eight hitter, Dwight Evans. Evans is hitting 279 with 12 homers and 38 runs batted in. His power numbers have been higher than this season. At this pace, he's could hit as many as 30 home runs if he continues this pace. We'll see. 
And this will be off McGregor's five column. Which is gonna be, it's gonna go kinda deep, but Harlow's there to make the catch. Okay, oh, he bobbled it, but he holds on. So after two full, it's the Red Sox two and the Orioles one. Dempsey's up now, hitting 310 on the season with four homers and 23 runs batted in. Again, he's, his power numbers are higher than usual for this season. So it's going to be up Teon's four column. And he will strike out looking. Three strikeouts now for Teon. He's up the number nine hitter, Desense, I mean, uh, Belanger. Belanger comes in hitting 221 with 15 RBIs. He's already got almost his, one less than the, his total for the season and a little over half the at bats. He's going to be out the five column. He's going to be a ground ball to Scott at first. He'll take it himself. And that'll do it for the Orioles in the top of the third. Nope, no, it won't. Two down now. Top of the order, Harlow. Struck out his first time up. And I called that one too soon as he's going to split the outfielders there and he'll himself a 2 0 double. So Orioles with a chance to score. And tie up the game again. Brings up Billy Smith who grounded out his first time up. Ooh, he's going to get a good one to hit here. And that's going to go over Lynn's head. That'll easily score Harlow. Smith will end up at second with a double. So an RBI double for Billy Smith ties the game once again. Brings up Eddie Murray grounded out his first time up. This will be a range check for Fisk. It's going to be a little dribble in front of the plate. Grabs it and throws the first for out number three. A good thing uh, they didn't go by my scoring or else the Orioles would have never scored that second run there but they do and it's a 2-2 game and we just want to let you guys know too that we uh, just purchased uh, Out of the Park Baseball 18 it was a, gr it was a great deal on Humble Bundle right now um, for the next nine I guess nine days now um, this being the I want to say it's the ninth today uh, let's check our calendar here. Yep, this is Thursday, November 9th, so for the next nine days, so up through the 18th, there will be a sale on Humble Bundle where you can get Out of the Park Baseball 18. Um, it's part of a three-game package, but the whole package can cost you as little as a dollar. So for a dollar, basically for 33 cents since you get two other games, you can get Out of the Park Baseball uh, which uh, to play on Steam. So that's a great deal. So if you're into baseball, it's a great game. Um, our Red Sox fan plays a lot of it, uh, as well as other some other YouTubers. Um, but our Red Sox fan uh, does, has a great couple of great series Red Sox series going on on there. So check those out. And Mr. Brody uh, has just became a manager of the 19 uh, the GM manager slash everything of the 1977 Boston Red Sox which I've just started a game uh, series there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do every game from that, but I'll be tele uh, televising. Um, uploading some videos from Out of the Park Baseball uh, 18 of the 1977 season, um, probably soon. So check that out and uh, get yourself Out of the Park Baseball 18 for less than a buck, well, for a buck. All right, back to the game here. So Butch Hobson, the number nine hitter, will lead it off for the Red Sox here in the third. Now tied at two. Hobson comes in hitting 298 with eight homers and 32 runs batted in. He's about where he should be power-wise, but his uh, average is almost 50 points higher. I'm sure he'll cool off eventually. He'll get a good pitch to hit here, though. And he's gonna hit this one deep to right field. But Singleton's under it and makes the catch for out number one. Top of the order, Burleson doubled and came around the score. The Red Sox run in the first, first run. And he'll get another good pitch to hit here. And this time he'll lace himself a single past Belanger. 
So one out and we're gonna run around first. Uh, and we're not gonna try to steal. Dempsey's got a minus two arm, so and Burleson's only a average base stealer. So we're gonna have him stay at first there. So maybe do a little hit and run here with Remy. No, uh, lefty on Remy doesn't hit lefties that well, so we're not gonna chance to get uh, getting a strike him out, throw him out, double play here. So we're gonna let Remy hit away. Gregor looks in for the sign from Dempsey. Here's the windup in the pitch. Burleson gets his lead. And he's gonna hit one right to Smith, over to second for one, back to first. And it'll be a double play to end the inning. So maybe we should have done a little hit and run there. That would have probably stayed out of the double play there. But that was a rocket hit right at Smith So on a hop. So that probably would have, could still have been a double play too. So, so all right. So we head to the top of the fourth with a score. Red Sox 2 and Orioles 2. Ken Singleton will lead it off. Doubled his first time up. He scored the first Oriole run. It's off Teon's four column. It's going to be, uh oh, ground ball to Hobson. Which is always an adventure when it goes to Hobson. And he's going to get in front of it, but the question is will he handle it cleanly? The odds are against him. And he does not. So he gets the e big E2. And Singleton will be at second again, this time on a two base error by Butch Hobson. So we got our in scoring position for Pat Kelly. Grounded out his first time. That's going to be off the five column with Tion, which is going to be a fly ball to center. Range check on Lynn. He should be able to make the play here. Very good defensive outfielder. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Lynn's under it, makes the catch. So. Recently, I can't remember what video I was watching, but I think it was, might have been one of Al Red Sox fans' videos. Um, he was playing the Red Sox when I think it was 86, and uh, kind of doing a thing. I was thinking, kind of doing a what if. What if Fred Lynn and Carlton Fisk had stayed with the Red Sox through the 80s instead of getting traded to the White Sox and was it the Angels? Um, that would have been probably a diff much different team, definitely. Um, with Fisk and Lynn still in, in line. So we may do a retro, no, a, not a retro, but a what if uh, scenario. Maybe maybe even using out of the park baseball. A great simulation game there. Um, where we can fast play some seasons there and see how the Red Sox would have done if Fred Lynn and Colin Fisk would have stayed on the team. So, something to think about. So, all right. So one down now in the Oriole fourth. Brings up Terry Crowley. Crowley had an RBI ground out his first time up. And he'll ground out to Remy again. Over to Scott for out number two. So to bring up to Sensei's. The Sensei struck out his first time up. And he'll strike out again swing. So up to three and a half, the score remains Boston 2 and Baltimore 2. Jim Rice will lead it off here in the fourth, the home half of the fourth. He grounded out in an RBI ground out his first time up. And this time he'll strike out swing for out number one. Captain up now, Kali Strzemski, grounded out his first time up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Bollinger at short. He's an excellent defender, just like Burleson. It's a few less errors than Burleson does. And he will make the play for out number two. So two down now, the base is empty for Fisk. Flew out his first time up. And Fisk will get a good one to hit here. And he's going to lay off of it. That was way in, ended up curving way inside. Looked like it almost hit him, but ended up being, it didn't, but it was definitely a ball. As Fisk gets shaken up a bit, Moss, Charlie Moss, the trainer, comes out to look at him. He's fine, so he'll have the first with a two out walk. 
Brings up Fred Lynn, who struck out his first time up. Fred Lynn also not so great against lefties. And he'll pop one up the third as the senseis range over and make the catch for out number three. The Red Sox are 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. Hoping to get over 500 in this one. But Dempsey up now struck out his first time up. And he'll ground one to Hobson. This time he handles it cleanly. Throws Dempsey out for out number one. Let's check out some other scores. Toronto and Cleveland are scoreless. Clancy and Paxton dueling. Detroit leads the Yankees, which is good news. 2-1. to one. Milwaukee slipping by Seattle 6-4, to four, which is not good news. Heisel has hit his 19th home run for Milwaukee. The White Sox are shutting out the Twins 4 to nothing. Johnson has hit his third home run for the White Sox. Oakland clipping Kansas City 6-2. to two. And Texas leads California 1-0. Those are your American League scores. So Mark Belanger up now. Grounded out his first time up. And nice fastball by Tion. He looks at it for strike three. So Tion with five strikeouts. Much better control today as he has yet to walk a batter. So that brings up top of the order Harlow. He's one for two with a double. And he's going to get a second double a day as he hits one into the triangle. So running in scoring position with two down for Billy Smith. He's already got himself an RBI double. And he will issue, Tiant will issue his first walk of the day. Bring up the dangerous Eddie Murray. So far, Tiant has held Murray in check as he's grounded out twice. Runners get their leads. Here's the windup in the pitch. And he'll hit a line at a Scott and make the catch. To end the inning. So halfway through, it's we're all tied at two. And Scott makes the catch, and he's the first to come up at bat in the Red Sox fifth. So Scott homered in his only plate appearance so far today. It's going to be off of this two column. It's going to be a grounded to the Sensees at third. Up with it over to Murray for out number one. That'll bring up Evans, who flew out his first time up. And the Sensees makes a great play on that one on the liner, robbing Evans of at least a single. So two down and the base is empty for Butch Hobson, who flew out his first time up. And Hobson's going to get a good one to hit here. Oh, and he gets the right one, but does not get the right split as he hits this one to the warning track when Kelly will make the catch for out number three. So he got that one kind of off the end of the bat. And all he has to show for is a long out. So that'll bring up Singleton now. Singleton here in the top of the sixth is reached twice. Once on a double, once on a two-base error by Hobson. And this time he'll strike out looking. Strikeout number six for Tian. Brings up Pat Kelly. 0 for 2. And he's going to lace a single to center. So one out single for Kelly. Scott holding him on. Brings up Crowley. 0 for 2 with an RBI. But they're going to go with the hit and run here. And ooh, this one's hit deep. And it's over Lynn's head. And it looks like Kelly is going to score all the way from first on the hit and run. So the Orioles take the lead on a double by Crowley, a second RBI of the day. The Sensei's up now, struck out both times. And he'll line up to Hobson. Part number two. Bring up Dempsey, 0 for 2 on the day. Kind of off this 3 column. A ground ball to Hobson. Throws over to Scott to retire the side. But 
the Orioles retake the lead, well, take the lead for the first time today on the RBI double by Crowley. Red Sox will have the top of the order up now. Burleson's two for two on the day. He's got himself a double in the first and a single in the third. Let's see what he does in the sixth there. He'll strike out swinging. So that'll bring up Jerry Remy. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And he'll get under one here and I'll pop it up to Smith that second. On the edge of the outfield grass, Smith will make the catch for out number 2. So that'll bring up from Jim Rice. He's 0 for 2 with an RBI. And he'll find that single spot in his two column. A two out single for Rice. Brings up the captain, Kyle Yastrzemski, who grounded out twice. And he's going to hit a fly ball to right. Singleton sizes it up and makes the catch for out number three. So we're ahead to the seventh inning now with the score Baltimore three and Boston two. Tiant back on the hill. He's up to 97 pitches. Corners are playing in for Belanger. 0 for 2 on the day. And he'll get under one here. Hits it to his counterpart, Burleson, who'll make the catch for out number one. Brings up Harlow. He's 2 for 3. He's doubled his last two times up. And this time he draws a walk. So the second walk Tion's given up today. This goes out to talk to Tiant, goes back behind the plate. So here's the wide defend the pitch to Smith, who's one for two with a double. Has himself an RBI, and it looks like Carlo is gonna be run on the curveball here. And we're gonna throw for the runner. And hook slide, and he's out. So Fisk throws out the base runner. Throws out Harlow trying to steal. So two outs and the base is empty now for Smith. And this will be, oh no, another range check on Hobson. He's already committed one error today. And ooh, dances around that error there. Does not commit the error, he juggles it a little bit, but is able to make the play. As he dives for it, he gets up and makes a strong throw to first. Alright, let's get our trivia question here. So, he had a lifetime average of 310. Who is known as Old Aches and Pains. So, lock in your answers. I don't think I know this one. Lifetime 310 average was old aches and pains. I feel like I should know this one because we've had it before, but cannot think of who that is. So, all right, so here is the answer. Luke Applin. Oh, okay, I should have known that one. So thank you, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags, for that trivia question. So our Red Sox will have Fisk. Lynn and Scott in the home half of the seventh here, looking to tie the game at least. One run behind. And Fisk will have himself a single. So good start to the inning. Tying run is on now. Brings up Fred Lynn, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Oh, and Lynn, for, oh man. Thought that was going to be a single, but that was an S5. So line out to Smith as Fisk is back safely. So one out and one on for George Scott, who's one for two with a solo home run. And it's going to be off McGregor's four column, which is going to be a range play on Kelly, who's a four range. So there's a one to 11 chance that it's going to fall in. So 11. Uh, so he get, does get in front of it. And, but he's going to 
not be able to make the play here. As it tips off the end of his glove. Scott will take second. And Fisk on third. So I mean two runners in scoring position now for Dwight Evans. Infield playing in now. Evans up. Evans is 0 for 2 on the day. Lined out in the second. And, I mean, uh, flied out in the second and lined out in the fifth. But he'll get a good one to hit here. Hopefully this will at least get the run home. It's going to be a ground ball to short. Throws the first and gets him. So Fisk has to hold at third. So the Red Sox would love to have a hit by, at least a single by Fisk, but should score two. As the runners will be off on contact. But Hobson's 0 for 2 on the day. Can he come through? Oh, they're going to intentionally walk Hobson to, to load the bases. Not sure if I do with that strategy as Burleson's been hot today. He's 2 for 3. So we'll see what happens here. It looks like it's going to pay off good here. Is it the best we can hope for is a range check? McGregor's 4 column. Now, we can sense he's a good fielding third baseman, so we'll see. And he's going to get in front of it, and he will make the play over to Murray for out number three. So the Red Sox threaten but cannot score. And they continue to trail it by a score of 3-2, to two, headed into the eighth. Uh, action in the Red Sox pen. Can't really see who's up there as Tion did pitch a complete game in the actual game. So we'll see. Zimmer decides to let him at least start the eighth inning. And that'll be a ground ball to Scott. Scott grabs it, races, and beats Murray to first. So one out in the Oriole eighth. Brings up Singleton. It's one for three with a double. And he'll ground this one to Remy. He's up with it over to Scott for out number two. So two up and two down in the Oriole eighth. Brings up Pat Kelly. Singled his last time up. One for three. Came around the score. And that'll be Tion's third walk of the day. So been a little bit wild later on in this game. But it's kept the Orioles to just three runs. Brings up Crowley who has two of the three Oriole RBIs. And he'll ground this one to Scott, who trot to the bag for out number three. So we're headed to the bottom of the eighth with the Orioles leading by one. Remy will lead it off. He's hitless on the day 0 for 3. Although he's going to get a good one to hit here off McGregor's card. And it's going to be a range check on Smith. He's a two range. And looks like he's going to get a single on this one. And he's unable to get in front of it. And he makes the stop, but he's unable to make the throw. Didn't want to risk throwing it away. So leadoff runner is on for the Red Sox. And brings up Jim Rice. And we may do a hit and run with Jim Rice here. I don't know. Nah, we're just going to have him hit away. And it's going to be off the three column of Rice. And it's going to be a walk. So that'll put runners on first and second for the captain, Kyle Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski's 0 for 3 on the day. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just have him hit away. And that's going to be it for McGregor. As Tippy Martinez is going to come in. Martinez has pitched in 26 innings. Has pitched 26 innings in 19 games. Has an 0-4 record, but does have only a 2.42 ERA. So lefty on lefty matchup here. Yastrzemski's 0 for 3. So here's the windup in the pitch by Martinez. Looks the runners back. Oh, this could be two as Belanger throws over to, over to 
Just an attack to attack number one, back to first. And it's a double play as Remy moves to third. Perhaps we should have tried the hit and run there. So that'll bring up Fisk. He's one for two at a single. He's also a walk. So Sox need a big hit by Fisk here. And he's going to go round out to Belanger for out number three. So despite getting the first two runners on, the Red Sox cannot capitalize. And we'll head to the ninth with the Red Sox down by one. I'm going to let Tiant start the first batter anyway. Ooh, it's going to be off the one column. And that'll be a line out to Hobson, a rocket there. For out number one. That'll bring up Dempsey 0 for 3. And he's going to lace a single past Burleson. And we're going to at least do a mound visit here to see what we get. I forget. <laughs> I forget. I thought we could do one each shot here, but I can't. Yes, right there. Right here. Yeah, we're going to visit. Uh, he is fatigued. All right, so we're going to take Tion out here. All right, so let's see. Who are we going to bring in? Uh, the boy injury is over three. There you go. We'll bring in Stanley. Not that I want to, he's been horrible lately, but he's the only one that's under 100% usage, so on a pace. So we're going to bring in Stanley. He's been not so good lately. He's 1-2 on the season with 11 saves, but the ERA has jumped lately. It's a 3.64 now. 54 innings pitched, 63 hits, allowed 15 walks, and 17 strikeouts, and has a good three home runs. So the Red Sox need a good outing for a good performance by Stanley today to keep it a one-run game. Dempsey edges his way from the bag. Stanley continues to hold the runner close. Here's the windup and the pitch. That'll be a ground ball to Hobson at third. Tosses to Remy for one, back to first. Not in time. They do get the lead runner. So two down now for Larry Harlow. He's been on base three out of the four times. Doubled twice and walked. Two for three. And he's going to get under one here and pop it up. So Stanley gets... Retires two batters and... No further damage. So we'll head to the bottom of the ninth with the Red Sox down by one. Getting a run to tie. Hmm. We gotta leave Lennon. I don't think we really have much much on the bench here. Lynn is pretty bad. There's like one good column right here in the middle. I can't believe we're even considering this, but the only other, only possibility I'm thinking here is Bailey. <laughs> He's got a bunch of walks here. He's got some seven walks. So yeah, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm gonna bring in Bob Bailey to pinch hit for Fred Lynn. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do it. He's got a bunch of seven walks, though, so he can get it on his card and roll a seven. Gonna do it. So Bob Bailey comes in to pinch hit. <laughs> Got a ton of walks there, so hopefully he'll, he'll grab that. So we'll see what happens here. See if the Orioles counter. They do not. Yeah. Oh, this is a good column though. It's a good walk column. And Bailey's gonna come through with a single. Pinch hit single. Wow. And we're gonna immediately relieve him for a pinch runner. As he is slow as molasses. I think we're gonna bring in Rohammer as our best bet here. Or is it Duffy? One to twelve. I mean it's Duffy actually. Two a bonus. He's one to twelve too. I think Duffy's one to fourteen. Yeah, we're gonna bring in Frank Duffy to pinch run for Bailey, who gets laces a single. 
All right, so I had to bring up George Scott. Oh, I can't wait to find Scott. Scott is not a good marker. I don't think he is anyway. Let's check him out. He's a B bunker. Actually, he's a pretty good bunker. We're going to bunt with the boomer. We'll see. <laughs> so corners are going to play in. Scott is going to drop a bunt down. Here we go. 81% chance. Uh, one and two. The batter fouls off two bunts. Offense must decide to take the bunt off or stay with it. 69%. We're going to take it off. Looks like Stanhouse is going to come in in the middle of the count. Interesting. All right, we'll see. Down here, Stanhouse is 1-0 with a 2.84 ERA. 19 innings switch, 17 hits allowed, 13 walks, and 13 strikeouts. See what Scott can do now with a 1-2 count. Ooh, Scott's going to get a good one to hit here. And he'll lay off of it as he ends up drawing the rock. Well, that might be even better as they did not have to surrender an out there. So the go-ahead run is now on. Or well, the winning run, I should say. Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans, I think he's a good bunter. We will have him bunt. And we'll leave Scott. He's not that. He's only one less than, than uh, our best base runner is 12. So 11's not bad. Better than Billy's 8 anyway. All right, so let's see here. Let's look at Evans' card. I think Evans might be an A bunter. He is. So we're going to bunt with Evans. So Evans going to get his 86% chance of success here. Got to go with those odds. All right, so Evans is going to be asked to bunt here. 86% chance. Oh, are you kidding me? The same thing happened again. <laughs> we're going to stay with it this time, though. All right, Evans gets the job done. I didn't hear the contact, so I thought he might have missed it. So Red will put run, the go ahead, the winning run at in second, and the tying run at third with Duffy. So we'll see. Hobson can come through. Hobson's 0 for 2, intentionally walked last time up. So we'll see what Hobson can do here. Infield playing in. Foul tip for strike three. So it's going to be up to Rooster Rick Burleson here if the Red Sox are going to continue today or go home or uh, lose. <laughs> so Burleson's had a good day, two for four. Red Sox need a clutch hit from Burleson now. Stanhouse looks in for the sign from Dempsey. Here's the windup and the pitch. Ooh, not the call we wanted. And he's going to fly out to Harlow to end the game. So the Red Sox leave the tying and winning runs in scoring position. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. That was left out. I saw Remy's picture there. But that is it as the Red Sox fall to the Orioles by a score of 3-2. to two. Let's take a look at the box score. And maybe Mr. Brody saw that coming and decided to exit early. So right, McGregor gets the win. He's 9-3. 7 innings pitch. 6 hits allowed. Allowed only 2 runs. Both of them earned. 3 walks and 3 strikeouts. Martinez gets his third hold of the season. Pitching 1 inning of scoreless 1 hit ball. And Stanhouse comes in and survives and gets his 11th save. Tian is a tough luck loser. He pitched pretty well. Eight and a third innings pitch. Seven hits allowed. Three runs out of them earned. Three walks and six strikeouts. Got a little wild towards the end. And Bob Stanley pitched two thirds of an inning without allowing a hit or a walk. Amazing. So the Orioles, Larry Harlow, two for four with a run scored. Billy Smith had an RBI, one for three. Crowley. One for four with two RBIs. For the Red Sox, Burleson was two for five. Rice was one for three with an RBI. 
and George Scott with a solo home run. That was pretty much it, as we're going to give the player of the game to Scott McGregor. He deserves it. Could give it to Crowley, but he only had one hit. Did have two RBIs, though, but we'll give it to uh, Scott McGregor with a runner-up to Kerry Crowley. So thank you for joining us. i been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming, my co-hostess, host and hostess, Mr. Brody and Miss Mags. And we're probably going to do another... Um, video tonight on grimoire after the after bible study so take care and god bless and we will see you in the next 1978 red sox replay when we finish up with the baltimore orioles actually let's quickly take a look at our standings here and still looking to at the all if we get to the all-star break is doing a um Comparison with Al, if he, I'm not sure if he's continuing. I don't think he's continuing his series from on Digital Diamond Baseball, but we're supposed to do a comparison when we hit the All-Star break. So I got another couple weeks to go. So hopefully I can maybe knock out a few games later this week and this weekend and get a little bit closer. Hopefully get into July so we can do that soon. All right, so let's look at the league stats here. So... With the loss, the Red Sox are only clinging just a half game lead over Milwaukee, who won today. And the Yankees are the Yankees are only three and a half games behind, so. The Red Sox have hit some kind of tough times recently. And the Angels have now the two game lead over Kansas City and two and a half over Texas, so tight race in both divisions. And let me just check. I think we lost the previous game before this. Yeah, so the Red Sox on a two-game losing streak. So the Red Sox hope to salvage a game of the series against the Orioles. And we'll see who we get scheduled here. So it'll be Dennis Martinez for the Baltimore Orioles going up against Mike Torres for the Boston Red Sox. So take care and God bless, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.